With the 2024 season just a couple of months away, I thought I would do my best to try and predict the 2024 ladder a bit early. It's tough to do without seeing any of the teams play, but I gave it a go, so let's get into it. We start down the bottom with West Coast. It was a 50-50 between two teams for me, but West Coast are my wooden spoon picks currently. There is a sense of deja vu about this season. Injuries are starting to mount early. We haven't really seen any improvement on the first team, bar a Ruckman who was a fringe player at another club anyway. Everyone's getting older. The important players are unreliable. I can at least see North getting better in the future, but there is really no reason to be happy as a West Coast fan right now. Hopefully things can change because they're too proud of a club to be down this end of the ladder. And North Melbourne next, they have yet again lost experienced players and gained a bunch of kids. It happens far too often with this team. The last decade has been a cycle with no real change. Until I see reasons to believe, I'm just going to predict them to fail. And looking at this team, they've lost incredible experienced players like Goldstein, Mackay, Zebel, and Hall. And who have they replaced those players with a bunch of draft picks and some guys yet to really announce themselves as household names. It's a flaky team with mountain-sized holes. I can't see them escaping the bottom four. A new addition to the bottom four, Fremantle. I just think morale must be so low over there. They were flat in 2023, boring and bad. Not a fun combo for fans. And seriously, I think the loss of Lockie Schultz is set to be the most impactful of any club's outgoing players. That forward line looks really dull now. They struggled for goals there before. They're going to struggle even more now. Longmuir is under the pump. The team lacks creativity. There is no spark like you see with other sides. I reckon Freo are set to struggle. And the last spot in the bottom four, Hawthorne. I still think they are too young, too inexperienced, too reliant on their star players. No team in the league relies more on their best player than Hawthorne. Without Sicily, they looked genuinely lost. They haven't won without him in a couple of years. I can't see that trend stopping the way that defense lines up. It's full of holes. They lack class in the midfield. They lack a proven ruck. There's no composure through the whole engine room, really. They can cause an upset or two, but I struggle to see them grinding out consistent performance. In 14th, I have Richmond, another team like Hawthorne that relies on individuals a bit too much. Without Tom Lynch, there really isn't much to this team, especially now with Rewalt gone. There is at least some real top-tier talent. Martin, Bolton, Toronto, Prestia. They're great players that can turn things around if they click. But I just didn't see any evidence of a turnaround last year. Maybe Uze can build bridges and connect this side. But they just looked a bit safe and predictable. Definitely room for them to rise, though. Hard to get a gauge on this team. Next up, we have Gold Coast. I don't see them making finals like others. I don't know why that is the expectation. They are such a young team still. Sure, they have talented top-tier draft picks, but that won't help them for 2024. Hardwick has a lot to work with in two or three years, but I think this side aren't that close to being ready anytime soon. I reckon they are closer to the bottom than making finals. There is still some real question marks. 13th is about as high as I can put them. In 12th, I have Geelong around the same mark as last year. They're only getting older and slower and losing their hunger. They have 11 players aged 30 or over. This, to me, spells the end of their run. Last year wasn't a blip. This is what we should be expecting. I think for this team to succeed, so much has to go right. Every veteran has to simultaneously get the best out of their body one last time. I can't see that happening. We will see injuries, dips in form, retirement. I think they are in no man's land, chasing the pack, but doing so at a leisurely speed to avoid a fall. In 11th, I have Adelaide. I feel like some will be annoyed about this placement. I, I love the Crows. Fun team to watch, but that only gets you so far. We saw that last year. It's rare that you kick the most goals but miss finals. It shows that defense is flaky to say the least and it's only getting flakier. Dude is gone and Nick Murray is also out for quite some time, injured for half a year, meaning the Crows will have to rely on Jordan Butts to lead the key line. It's got to be just about the weakest group of key backs around right now. Sure, they're fun up the ground but you're only as good as your defense. The first 10 or so games will make or break their season and I think it's likely we see them having to play catch up after a slow start without any real defensive stability. In 10th place, I have Melbourne. Maybe I'm a bit scared by the off-field mess but to be fair, you would have to think it's taking its toll. In the last few years, they've had off-field bust-ups in pubs, a coach embroiled in controversy, a player being banned for drug use, and to top it all off, the star of the team isn't showing up to training after months of media scrutiny. Every piece of news coming out of this club preseason is negative. It seems a team unable to find unity right now. I'd love to be proven wrong, but early days, I'm not really vibing a powerhouse Melbourne outfit with everything going on. In ninth, I have St Kilda. Pretty much everyone's tipped to slide out of the eight. I, I just think their list is, as a whole, less exciting than other teams, but I do think they're going to be right in the mix again. Lion had this team cooking. They were stingy, hard to score against, and that to me means more than fun and fruitful up forward. We saw it firsthand with their impressive sixth placed finished. It's just easier for teams that exceed expectations to be found out the following year, though, but they should still be in the mix. Making the eight, I have Essendon. They really weren't that far off the mark last year. They were a couple of games out of the eight. A dreadful finish derailed an otherwise promising year. Now, though, they have added plenty of first-team talent to the list. They are fitter than they've ever been. The best 22 looks 
miles better than it did at this stage last season. Not many teams have improved themselves as much over the offseason. I think it's finals, but I doubt they have the medal to end that unwanted losing streak. In seventh, I have Port Adelaide. They made the same amount of changes to their team as SNM, but I really don't see the same improvement. They have added mostly fringe players to the team, fringe players from poor sides as well. They also have to deal with one of the toughest fixtures in the comp. That's what a top four finish does to you. I reckon there are teams above them right now that weren't above them last year. They are treading water in the eight while others made serious moves. I have them falling just a bit. In spot six, I have the dogs. I think maybe I see this list in a better light to most. I think it's rounded. I think its strengths are only getting stronger now that players are hitting their peak. You look at that forward line, Norton, Waitman, Hugo Hagen, another preseason under the belt, and we only see their output increased. I'm not convinced by their defensive capabilities, but their players are supposedly training the house down. We should see them fully fit by round one. I think it's too good a team to miss out two years in a row, and if they do, then Beveridge should consider himself at risk, to say the least. In fifth, I have GWS. I think in recent years, it's been tough to judge this team pre-season. 2021, we thought they were set to fall, and they proved us wrong. Then we backed them in for 2022, and they were firmly inside the bottom four, and the year after, they made a prelim. They've been all over the place, but 2024, I see real stability under Kingsley. I think this team looks more like a team than it has in the past. They were around the top four in 2023. I don't see much changing this year. In fourth, I have Sydney. I really respect what they did in the offseason. I think their inclusions make sense and better their depth. I think they're getting that perfect age demographic as well. Their best 22 are all around that 22 to 28 mark. The most important players anyway. I think a lot rests on Grundy and whether or not he can return to his best, but their team has such a nice blend to it. Every area looks rounded and concrete. You can't really find anything mouth-watering like you can find with Brisbane or Collingwood, but there aren't holes. It's a solid team with a solid system. I'm bullish about them this year. In third, I have Collingwood, but the top three is pretty much equal. The Pies just won their flag. They have improved their team. The Warriors now, whether or not they can get caught out. No team was viewed as much by their opponents than this one. Every side will now have a plan to face them. I still think they are good enough to overcome those challenges. They're an incredible team, but I can see 2024 being a far more difficult season than the previous one. I'm backing them for a real grand final push again, but the home and away season might be a bit trickier for them. In second, I have Carlton. They were nuts in that second half of the year. Bottom four to a prelim in a couple of months. We saw them play the way we thought they would. They have such a strong team. It's a potential powerhouse team that could really cause chaos if they find consistency. They can't start the way they did last year. A full season of them at their best could be deadly, so they got to get started quickly. And I back them to play the way that we saw them play late. I even think they have another gear to go to in 2024. I'm really excited to see them. But at number one is Brisbane. I look at their team and I just find so much to like about it. There isn't a best 22 as strong as Brisbane's, and the depth they have surrounding it is incredible. They are stacked across the board. I really don't need to say much more. I just think their team is the best, so why not predict them up the top? And I think we saw them prove they are just as competent on the road last year. They will be hungry, impossible to beat at the Gabba. Lions minor premier for me. But that is that. Ladder prediction done. Let me know what you think down below. Do you agree or disagree with any of my picks? Have I shafted your team? Like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to see more just like it.